Mm, I have something that came up during the meditation. Um, well, it was it was the feeling of a mix of sensations and thoughts and train of thoughts and intuition or whatever. Um, the, it was this sense that there are things that feel in the in what you were talking about in the now that feel like as if you're holding a that are painful or that are almost as if you're holding a sea urchin. I had that image. Um and you kind of have to get used to holding the sea urchin. And it also seemed at one point it came as if the ultimate sea urchin that's almost the constant um, constant pain uh, seems to be the this idea that it that. I guess it's an identification, no? The idea that I'm a body. Um, inside a, an external world. And. I don't know if it is that way, no? Um, maybe I'm just asking for mirroring but it also also the idea came that it sounds so impractical to live how can you live without that idea like that you're uh, without the idea that you're a body inside a world the the problem is autonomous no yeah that Well, I agree that, that it's about holding that pain. So what you're calling the sea urchin is something that is painful. That's what happens when we bring our attention to the present moment, to we, what we call the now, the present moment. It's all going to bring up or we get in touch with what is happening now that we are trying to escape. And so the only way we can escape is by imagining, contracting in thought. And so that's what I was addressing. We constantly have this strategy of when I get there. And it could be in one minute or it could be tomorrow or it could be in 10 years. This is constant strategy of what I'm going to get to. And so all our, our, all our energy and our attention is contracted into that thought. It's a thought process. And it's very addictive. And it's constant. And it's all about imagining something else, something different from what is now. And so when we look at that, there's only one thing that can happen when you look at that and you see it for what it is and you recognize yes that's what i'm that's what i'm doing you automatically start coming into presence because you you start to see thought as thought instead of seeing thought as reality. Because when we're imagining the future, it starts to become real. It starts to, it's like you watch a movie and then you forget that it's a movie 
and you really enjoy it because you forget that it's a movie. You don't completely forget because it's a movie, but in thought, you can completely forget that it's thought. And it becomes a reality. So the future is a reality. Whatever you're imagining is a reality. And it's a constant trying to make a fabricate in our imagination a reality that is better that that i will get to it's a i will find a way to create that and it's all a contraction away from what's happening now and and what you're describing is is exactly what it is it's getting used to a certain kind of pain that is present and i always say fear pain fear pain just to generalize there's something that's very uncomfortable and so the more we see that we are completely immersed in this fantasizing and strategizing and efforting to get to something we start getting in touch with that pain what you're calling the, the sea urchin. And so, as you get used to that, as it becomes something you don't need to run away from, then you can think about the future knowing you're thinking about the future and you can function in a much more let's say appropriate way because when we are we are creating a future that becomes reality and we we go into it and tune out the present moment we disconnect from the present moment, we suppress our pain, we suppress whatever is happening that's uncomfortable, at the, at the core of it, it's going to be a kind of pain. And that's what you're addressing. But it could be a discomfort, it could be a boredom, it could be any kind of thing that on the surface is this thing we, we want to fix. But we think that we'll fix it by getting to a thing in the future. And we were the only way to fix it, you know, if I'm hungry, I can eat, but there's something that's deeper, which is what you're describing is this deep pain. And it has to do, because you talked about it when you said, it's the belief that I am inside this body in this world. And you said specifically, I, I won't be able to paraphrase you exactly, but it's the idea that I am this. And so the problem is not the idea. The problem is the belief. Any... It you mean the the belief that that idea is reality or that it hmm. yeah and the the problem is you won't really know that you believe that when you're believing it hmm. it's not like i believe there is god, there is a god or i believe there isn't a god or i believe that it, it's not like that it's it's um, a functioning as if I know what I am. It's a deep sense of knowing what I am. And then you can describe it, and obviously we talk about it, so it's I am this body. I am not that computer. Mm. 
and, and that if I say to you, you are that computer as much as you are the body, it can, it will seem ridiculous. And that's how, how deep the belief goes. And so, so oh. anything that you, anything that becomes a knowing of what you are is going to create pain. Because you are reducing what you are to something you are not. And then you said, just to address the last thing you said, how could I function without the idea that I am this body? And, and that's the, actually the only way to function is just knowing it's an idea. It, it's a thought that has a functional reason. But, but eventually you don't need that either because, for example, when you're playing guitar or when you're walking, especially when you're playing guitar, you're not coordinating every single muscle. It's the same with functioning. Once you drop out of the belief in knowing what you are, the functioning becomes like playing the guitar when you know how to play the guitar. There is a flow. When, when you say it's the only way to function, knowing that it's an idea, you mean it's the only way to function more sanely without uh, suffering to, or... To not be dysfunctional. So if, mm. if you know what you are, you will, you will be dysfunctional in some form, in some way. But when, what I was saying earlier, the knowing of what I am isn't obvious. It's, a, it's, it's hidden, it's deep. But we can talk about it to make it a conversation. So if you experience that you are that body and not what is around you. That is a belief. There's no reality to that. And so I'm saying that as a way to kind of have a litmus test And so you could think I'm saying something that's crazy or, or makes no sense, or you could, if you just consider what if there's something to it. Yeah. I, I... I consider it and I and I kind of intuit it, but yeah, I don't feel it. Well, it's it's not about feeling it, because you actually do feel it. You just 
overlook it. What I'm, what I'm describing, trying to describe, which is impossible to describe, what I'm trying to point to is, is already here now. It's how things are now. <clears throat> and then there's a process of thinking that veils it, but it's, it's veiled at the same time as it is seen. So, how do I say that differently? It's, it's as if you're looking at something directly, you're seeing it for what it is, and then there is a veil where it seems like it is something else. One of the, the metaphors that is used is, is walking in, in a forest and seeing a, a snake and you got close to the snake and you see it's a rope. And so you were always looking at a rope, but in your mind you were relating to a snake. So right now you, what you are experiencing, what you are feeling, is you are the universe. You're interpreting that as you are something really small inside of a body. In a, in a world of thought. But if you, if you hear sound it is inside of you and you are it yeah okay hmm. yeah i've had uh, i've had glimpses of that yeah, I think I get where you... Hmm. But the only obstacle is, is the pain and the fear. Because there's a letting go of, of that belief in being, in knowing what we are. And in letting go of that, there's a transition where it can be very scary and painful. There's fear that we won't be able to function. There's fear that we will die, we will go crazy. And then there's, there's pain in something in what we feel we deeply are dies. We're very attached to being small, to being contracted, to being in a state of struggle. And it's not a curse. It's not that we're attached and somebody attached us to it. It's, it's us. It's, it's a, a choice made in freedom.
So what are <clears throat> what are the glimpses? Are they just like a temporal scene of that, and then going back to to attaching to the beliefs? Yeah, it's like it's like giving yourself a break, so that you keep you can go back to the struggle. <laughs> Sounds masochistic, but... <laughs> it, it is, but not really because it's fun. You know, the, the struggle, the drama, it's, it has a kind of beautiful intensity. And so that's why I say, you know, enjoy it while it's happening. Take your time. But what matters is that you know that you're choosing it. That's what will make the difference. You're not a, you're not cursed. It hasn't been done to you. And, and that's what we don't want to see because it will, it will end the party. <laughs> the, the moment you see so truly, so deeply, without a doubt, you are creating it and choosing it, party's over. You can't, you can't go back into the dream. Because it's part of the spell. I mean, thinking you're the, you're not doing it. You're not choosing. This exactly. The spell is. It's happened to me. There's any form of sense of. It's happening to me without my. My choice or my preference or my. There's a sense of uh, victimhood. <laughs> 